Augustine can take it away. Yeah, thank you so much, Natasha, and thank you all for making the time. Um, I'm Agustin Cuello, an uh, associate engineer with uh, the planning group in DOT in San Jose. I'm the project manager for, for this plan. I'm very happy uh, to be here to share with you all the work we've done, um, and Natasha AC as, as well for, uh, yeah, to help me. Um, so um, we have a brief presentation, um, but um, the goal of this meeting is, is really to hear from you all um, about what we are proposing. Uh, we want to improve uh, this plan with your input uh, and, and, and that's key uh, for us. Uh, so please use the chat or raise your hand if you have a question and we will try to, to answer um, all your comments. So this is the agenda of the presentation. I'm going to start um, providing some general transportation vision that we have for San Jose. Then I will talk about uh, what's an NTIP, right? What's a multimodal transportation improvement plan and why um, DOT has decided that these NTIPs are a, a great tool to achieve our transportation vision and, and why we're uh, working in West San Jose. Then we want to um, provide a summary of what we learned in the past outreach events. Um, and then uh, Natasha will talk about how we can achieve our goals, right? Um, what can we do um, to, to improve transportation? Um, so starting with, with the transportation vision that we have for, for San Jose, we have two key plans in the city. We have the general plan and we have the climate smart uh, plan. And in those two plans, we have um, very specific goals for transportation. Um, we want to we want to go from 25% of trips being by walk or by bike and by transit to 88% 80, of the trips by 2050. So it's a really challenging goal, but it's really important um, for, for the city. Um, in, in, in summary, what we want to do is provide options, right? Um, uh, we know that there are many trips that um, currently can only be made by driving. Uh, but we think that if we provide those options, some of those trips could be made uh, walking or biking uh, or taking transit. Uh, and, and it's really important for, for us, for San Jose, because if we don't um, change um, and, and the city keeps growing, um, we're going to be facing some um, big issues, um, climate issues, congestion issues. Um, we have a crisis um, around um, fatalities uh, related to, to traffic. Um, every week we hear news about um, some, some people getting hurt in the city um, and, and, and also um, the traffic pollution um, is, is, is affecting our communities and the health of uh, our communities. So uh, with that background, um, uh, one of the tools that um, DOT is, is working on um, is, is these multimodal plans. Um, and we started this plan in West San Jose a couple of years ago. Um, the planning department uh, has done some land use planning in, in West San Jose, and we thought that complementing those plans with a transportation plan um, is the, the, right, the right way to, to, um, um, yeah, to, to balance the growth that those uh, land use plans are going to bring to West San Jose. Um, so this plan, um, we've done three main things. We have reviewed the existing conditions. We have looked into the, the existing data, traffic data that we have for the area. And we are, propose, uh, we are proposing multimodal transportation projects, program policies um, to help the community right, um, in the future. And then the, the last thing that we want to create with this plan is, is implementation chapter. We want to be able to deliver those projects um, and work with the community on defining how those projects are going to be um, implemented. Um, so what's multimodal? Again, uh, uh, I mentioned this before, but um, multimodal means that we want to provide multiple travel options. We want to improve tra uh, transit, biking, walking. Uh, we want to provide emerging mobility solutions. And we can also um, want to provide uh, a good um, network for, for um, private cars as well. This is the project boundary um, in West San Jose. As you can see, hopefully in the map, um, the, the area um, is starting Cupertino to the west, all the way to uh, downtown, um, Dilly Dong Station, 
to the east, and then uh, to the north we have Santa Clara, and to the south Campbell. Um, and it, the shape of this area is, is not, uh, um, yeah, there are many different, um, the, the boundary is not very clear because we want to follow the land use plans that the planning department uh, um, approved um, a, while, a while ago. Um, this is the, um, this is the project timeline. Um, Last year, we, we evaluated the existing conditions and we did the first uh, workshop uh, during the summer. We've we done several community outreach events and we have defined an, in, an initial list of projects. Now we are working on, on this third um, section here during this second community meeting and we are gonna uh, develop the final plan soon. So, so um, the goal is to present this plan to council by spring of this, this year. Um, what, what do we know about West San Jose? What are the existing conditions in West San Jose? Um, so the, the first thing that we need to acknowledge is that most of us still drive um, alone in West San Jose. Um, it's not easy to, um, to commute by transit. It's not easy to, um, to walk. There are many different barriers uh, in West San Jose. Um, so we need to acknowledge that the existing conditions is, is mostly people driving. Um, uh, and that's the challenge that we wanna try to tackle with this plan. Um, there's a lot of information here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna highlight some key uh, things. Um, for example, the cost of transportation is really expensive in San Jose for a family. Um, to um, to pay for, for gas, to, to pay for the car. Um, so how we can implement um, projects and programs to reduce that cost. Um, another key um, key information that we, we obtained with this, with this um, data uh, is that uh, even though, um, as you can see in, in this trip length um, graphic, um, that the distance that um, people um, travel by auto is around 10 miles and for bus is around five miles. If you look at travel times and the travel times are really, really similar, which means that um, the auto travel time is much more competitive than the bus. Um, so, um, so people that rely on public transit um, is already spending a lot of more time um, to get to the destination um, compared with the people that use uh, automobiles. Um, the last key um, existing conditions that I said that I wanna share is related to uh, collisions. Um, this is a, a high priority for, for DOT. We wanna reduce to zero on the, the number of fatalities in the city. Um, and looking at the data, one thing that um, is, is, is clear is that even though um, there's not many people that bike, uh, not many people that um, walk longer distances, um, the percentage of fatalities uh, for that population is really, really high. Um, only 5% of collisions in, involve a bike, but 11% of fatalities are people biking. The same for pedestrians. Only 5% of people um, were involved in, in, in a collision when they were walking, but of those, uh, 44 percent um, were fat fatalities uh, were were pedestrians and so there is really a um, a disconnect between the number of people that bike and the, it's, it's low and then the number of people that um, get injured when they're biking is really really high um, um, in this map we can see some areas uh, with a con concentration of collisions and fatalities um, I want to highlight three areas, uh, Saratoga, uh, the interchange of Saratoga, um, huge concentration of collisions. Um, and we think that is because uh, people driving are used to a high speed drive along the freeway. And when they get out of the freeway, um, they keep that speed um, um, high. Um, the same along Winchester interchange, and then we, we also see some uh, high concentration of collisions on San Carlos Street. 
Um, so what kind of projects we can implement in those areas to reduce the number of collisions and improve safety? That's something that we want to try to, to address with this plan. Um, after reviewing all the existing conditions, um, we want to share with you the outreach that we've done in the past. Um, the, during the development of the urban village plans, and the planning department did some outreach focus on transportation. So we, ha we have reviewed that information. Um, and last year, we did an, in an initial workshop. Um, we've done some meetings with neighborhood associations. We've done some tabling events. Um, we have an online survey. Um, and we also um, have some technical advisory meetings with VTA and with um, neighboring cities like Santa Clara, Cupertino, and Campbell. Uh, that was the phase one of the outreach. And we are now starting the phase two. Um, this is the, the second workshop. We're going to have some uh, online office hours. Um, and then we are, we're going to keep meeting with neighborhood associations. And we really want to partner with them. Um, on this plan. Uh, we see them as a key a stakeholder um, for the plan and, and also for the implementation of the plan. Uh, we want to uh, make um, those associations, um, um, uh, we want to empower those, those associations to, to make decisions with us, to help us de design those projects and to help us um, decide where to implement those projects. Some, some high levels um, of the outreach. We receive a lot of comments about the pedestrian improvement. Uh, the community wants to see more trees, safer crossings, um, better sidewalks, um, slower streets, um, better traffic signals, and also um, better personal safety. Uh, we receive uh, several comments about uh, people not feeling uh, safe when they're waiting for transit, for example, or even when we're when they are uh, walking uh, on their neighborhoods. So that's something that is key uh, to make sure that um, that people feel safe. Um, we also receive a lot of comments related to the bike um, infrastructure. Um, many comments about adding more protected bike lanes, uh, slower speeds, uh, and safer intersections more bike parking, um, better parking connectivity, um, things like that. Um, and, and finally, um, also some uh, input about a better public tra transit. The community uh, told us that they would like to see better transit um, stops, better transit options, uh, uh, a service more faster and, and reliable, and, and better fees and last mile connections. Um, BTA runs transit on the main corridors, but many residents live uh, far away of those corridors. So, so how we can provide some connection between where people live and then and the transit stops. Um, yeah, so now we, we want to share with you how we think uh, some options that we can consider about how we can achieve our goals. Um, Natasha, do you want to? Take yeah, done. yeah. Thank I'll, you. I'll give you a little break. So, like Augustine said, we took all of that existing conditions analysis that we did. We combed through data. We combed through old plans, and then we did all this outreach with the public to make sure that we were, you know, hearing just on the ground what people were needing. And then we took both of those things and combined them into this set of recommendations that we're proposing as our draft kind of list of to-do items in this project. Next slide, please. So we came with these big bucket goals that really mirror the, the topics that we heard from the public. And first and foremost was, we need to create safer and more enjoyable streets for people walking in West San Jose. And so we took a look at the corridors that are within our project area. And we have, you know, we highlighted in blue, these corridors that we know are commercial or that are in uh, areas where we were seeing a lot of crashes um, to the west, Saratoga, Meridian, Race Street, and Lincoln Avenue as primary pedestrian corridors that we know that we need to make a lot of investments to make them nice, slow, safe, and enjoyable. And we also know that our major transit corridors, which are also on this map in orange, 
need to be high quality pedestrian corridors as well, because we know that everyone that takes transit is also a pedestrian. So we want to create safer crossings. People are transferring from one stop to another to get to another line. And we just need to make sure that these major corridors are, are safe for, for those people. So uh, what does this mean when we say, you know, safer pedestrian streets? Um, here's our toolbox. So here are all the things that we can implement along the corridors we just showed, but also around West San Jose to make it safer for people walking. So, and, and this is not an ex exhaustive list of all the things, but these are some of the biggest things that we can do. Um, speed bumps, I'm sure you're all familiar with those. They do come in different um, sizes and, and widths and things like that, but um, you know, speed bumps is one. Then there's raised crossings, which is basically kind of a, a speed bump, but with a crosswalk on top so that it slows cars down uh, as they're going where pedestrians would cross. Um, then there are bulb outs. These are painted bulb outs from a project in Austin. Um, what these bulb outs do is they slow turning cars. They make the time that uh, pedestrians are in the street shorter, so there's shorter distances to cross. Um, and yeah, they're, they're really great. You've probably seen a lot of them. They've been um, building them all around San Jose and other Bay Area cities. Also, we, oh, go ahead. I haven't seen any of those yet. Oh, really? The, these oh. ones are a little jazzy. They're, they're painted, but sometimes, you know, they're mostly concrete, so sometimes they're hard to see. Uh, but, you know, there, there need to be more in West San Jose, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I'd like to see more in West San Jose, at least, and that's what we heard. Um, and then also, because we are such a small group, if people do have questions, please feel free to raise your hand or put them in the chat. We can have a more... Um, informal conversation with a group this size. Um, we also are proposing various pedestrian signal improvements. And what this means is, um, you know, it could be as easy as a countdown signal, as we can see in this image, just knowing how long you have to cross the street. Um, that can be a game changer. If you know you don't have enough time, you might hang back. But if you're going in without knowing, you might get stuck. And that's a, a really terrible feeling. It can be an unsafe situation. We also know that we can have accessible pedestrian signals for people with disabilities that, so they can hear um, you know, a tone or a sound that will let them know when they need to cross. And we can also do something, um, this is a little nerdy, but it's called a leading pedestrian interval. And it will let people walking go ahead of the cars. So it'll give the silver um, person icon before the cars have a green light. And we see that those reduce um, crashes. Um, we are also looking into high visibility crosswalks. This is in Oakland's Chinatown. They did this beautiful muraled uh, pedestrian scramble. But um, you know, how can we make places where people are going to cross more visible? And, and if we can beautify them with murals, that'd be cool too. Um, installing pedestrian refuge islands. We know that a lot of streets in West San Jose are very, very wide. And it can be hard to get across the street in one go. So we want to give people a safe place to wait in the center of the street if they don't have enough time. And speaking of wide, um, you know, we have a lot of very, very long blocks in West San Jose, especially on some of our major streets. So what would we look like if we made some mid-block crossings or some safe places for people to cross that, um, you know, might need to get to a store or a bus stop that might not be close to an intersection? And then lastly, we know that speed is so integral to safety. Um, the faster a car goes, the more likely it is to result in a, a fatality if they um, collide with someone or something. So we wanna slow streets down. There's been recent state legislation that has given cities more control over setting speed limits, but we also have you know, all these tools in our toolbox to get cars to, to slow down. So we're really looking to slow, slow down streets. Next. So we have this fun tool that we've been using a lot during the pandemic called Mentimeter. And it's a really great way to hear from you all. So we have um, a code here. If you go to menti.com, you can do it on your cell phone, on another tab. If you're using a browser, it works on your tablet. Menti.com. And the, type it, it'll ask you for a code and you type in 670983100. And it is a fabulous way for us to get 
you know, people to chime in and give us their feedback. It takes notes for us so that we have it on paper. And um, yeah, we can go through it with everybody. Oh, and there's a question from Cheryl Miller. Are pedestrian overpasses a tool in the toolbox? Yes, we are looking to <clears throat> improve and create more pedestrian access across freeways as part of this toolkit. Um, we definitely have a lot more to say about it in the plan and we can share that if you're interested later. Um, I see Amy has a question. Hi, Amy. Oh, let me ask you to unmute. Sorry. Oh, there you go. Hi, uh, and I can wait till later in the presentation, but I, I was, um, you know, just wondering um, if we, you know, live in an area that is outside of your study area, like are some of these tools available? I'm, I'm drooling over some of these toolbox tools, um, but have been, um, and I know some places where it would be wonderful to implement them and have met with the Department of Transportation about some sites around schools, for example, where like any one of, where we've asked for some of these specific um, tools and we're just told they're not available basically. So anyway. Yeah, I, I can speak to that. Um, if could you we talk about sites outside of the project and I can wait till the end too. Oh no, that, that is a really great question. Um, the, the plan boundary was based on the urban villages and we did a buffer around those urban villages because we know that when new developments come in, we can leverage the dollars and, and things they're supposed to do to pay for these improvements. So it was a tactical um, decision, but it's something, you know, this is just our second MTIP plan. The first one was East, uh, a portion of East San Jose. We are learning that we cannot, you know, have such a narrow focus. So we are taking all the feedback, even when it doesn't relate to these specific areas and are pursuing improvements as necessary. So any feedback we get, we're either relaying it to a team that can handle it or taking it as our you know, kind of own project to see how we can push those things forward. Because we know that people don't just stay within a boundary. Um, so Amy, thank you for bringing that up. And if you, um, I, I can give you my email right now or at the end of this and, and we can work together on figuring out how to address your concerns. That would be great. Thank you. Because I'm um, I'm calling from the Moreland West neighborhood and we're, um, you know, next to the Paseo de Saratoga urban village, but we haven't had urban village planning and we probably won't, but we've got a signature project that's um, pretty far along. We have a Costco proposal. We've got almost a thousand units um, that Saratoga is targeting very near our border. So we've got a lot, lot, lot of, um, of density proposed and, um, you know, don't have a beautiful M tip. Um, and also just like I was saying, just around schools, because when it comes, I'm you know, so glad the city is you know, focused on uh, um, you know, improving pedestrian and bicycle safety. Um, but in our community, we have um, some of our biggest concerns are around school crossing areas. And I mean, just very obvious um, intersections that need some improvement. Um, if 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 you can go to the to the um, Move San Jose website, and I, I can paste the link in the chat. Um, there is one survey and that is map based, uh, so co so you can input locations and comments in that ma map, um, and um, that way we can register everything that you that you wanna um, um, yeah provide feedback. Um, so please go 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 to the website and and, and fill out the survey. Um, yeah. Um, if you don't have time now, now to, to go over all, all, all the locations. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. And I'll put that link in the uh, chat right now. And we'll also send it in a follow-up email to all attendees. Um, Eugene, you have your hand up? Go ahead. Yes, I did. Just one other concern that I had in addition to the need for pedestrian improvements, I noticed that on San Carlos and Bascom, the sidewalks are, very, are, are rather narrow. Also, the fact that people have, I have to cross sometimes eight lanes just to cross Bascom if I'm going to catch a bus. And speaking of the buses, one thing that would help at least speed the buses up as a, as a minimum would be some, a technology called transit signal priority. That is, 
having a bus signal a green to hold a little longer or start a little sooner for, so that it could speed along the corridor. Oh, Eugene, you are one step ahead of us. We have yet to talk about our transit toolbox and that's in there and there's more things. But yeah, transit signal priority is awesome. Um, sorry, I interrupted you there. I just wanted you to know it was coming, so. Right, good to be a step ahead of time. That's what Silicon Valley is all about. Um, so we will switch to our Mentimeter activity. Um, all the scene just has to change screens. I did see that there was a question in the chat around, um, Julie said, today was the first I've heard of this program. Sorry to ask this background question, but I'm wondering why my neighborhood near El Faseo, why we're not included in West San Jose. So Julie, I'm um, hoping that some of the responses I gave to Amy um, were helpful there. I mean, not helpful to the issues at hand, but we built the um, project area around a very technical you know, buffer around the urban villages but we know that that doesn't reflect user experience and, and we're working to you know, take in other feedback. So if you do have comments, um, I can share my email with you and we can talk at a later time or, or you can um, write them out in an email. Um, and then John has a very similar comment. Lawrence Saratoga and Prospect needs to be included in the study. A lot of residents are coming in. Um, okay, great, that's very similar. So I, I can reach out to all of you separately and we can have a discussion and, and there are definite opportunities to, to, to talk about this further. Thank you. So for Mentimeter, again, menti.com, the code is at the top of the screen here. Um, we're showing the streets we have identified as meeting pedestrian improvements here on the left. And, and again, these are not the only streets, but these are the, you know, the, the biggest ones and that had a lot of um, crashes and that have a lot of transit on them, a lot of businesses. What are other streets or areas that need improving? So all the folks that responded in the chat, you can also respond that here, but we are also logging the chat. Um, but I'm saying for Stevens Creek and Winchester, um, buses need to be, oh, I cannot be to end of that. Oh, perfect. But it, yeah, oh, transit signal priority, yep. Yeah. And then there's another comment. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I don't know how to go back. Yeah. The second word needs to be spelled correctly. You got us again. We we will, <laughs> you know, I don't want anyone to feel like they need to be perfect spellers to participate, especially on um, phones, you know, typing with thumbs. So this is a safe space for for typos in, in these Mentimeter exercises, but us city staff has have no excuse for typos on our presentation. Um, yeah, the, the second comment was about Lauren Expressway. Um, ah, definitely. Yeah, we, we, we've we noticed some areas around the expressway where um, there's, no, there's no sidewalk, um, it's really narrow. Um, you, you have to walk between a wall and a fence. It's, it's not a great environment. Um, but we need to coordinate with the county um, on, on that one, uh, since they're the ones that um, uh, manage the, the expressways. Um, so yeah, we will meet with them and try to figure out how we can um, implement projects on, on, on that corridor. Um, Great, and we got a lot of feedback in the chat and just three questions. So Augustine, just an on the fly suggestion. Maybe we don't have to use Mentimeter anymore since there are only okay. two participants on that. It's been really helpful in larger scale meetings when people might feel a little nervous to, to raise their hand, um, but it doesn't seem like it's used it today. So we'll get back to the presentation and we're gonna talk transit next. So Eugene, I wanna hear more of your ideas. So our second goal is to support improved transit systems. Uh, next slide. Yeah, and thank you, Cheryl, for, um, you know, she's agreeing with the concern around Lawrence. Um, put more things into the chat. This, these are logs and we put them into our feedback. So uh, it's a great way to, to give us your feedback. Um, next slide, please. So um, this is kind of a, a repeat of our last map, but these are our transit priority corridors where we're gonna be focusing the most dollars, the most attention to, you know, meeting the things that people need. Um, faster transit, more frequent transit, 
um, any infrastructure that bolsters that. So we can see Stevens Creek, um, and we have the routes listed here. Um, Winchester, we have Bascom, and then we have the Southwest Expressway. So, oh, and Nagley. Next slide. So here is a, you know, our transit improvement toolbox. Again, this is not exhaustive, but this is where we are going to be focusing the most attention. So we have transit only lanes or um, public service lanes, as we call them here in San Jose. These are lanes that um, are specifically for the bus, either all the time or at peak hours. Um, emergency vehicles and paratransit vehicles can also use these lanes and they actually speed up um, speeds for emergency vehicles if they need to get through traffic. And these are um, something that right now in San Jose only exists on Allen Rock Avenue. Um, they're being considered for Monterey, um, but these are something that, you know, we are definitely looking into for West San Jose. We also have safe routes to transit. Again, we know that um, people walking to transit are, are walking often and often in perilous um, situations. So we really want to make sure that the pedestrian uh, amenities and safety improvements are, are done near transit corridors. We also have bus rapid transit. This is um, also on Allen Rock. This is, um, you know, various systems that just, you know, center transit and speed it up along major corridors with, you know, nicer stations and stops than the usual corner bus stop. We also are looking into micro transit services. So these are shuttles um, that can be used on demand. Um, maybe they're, you know, a full bus like this or a minivan. Uh, there are companies that are doing this. There are different cities in the Bay Area that utilize these services. And they're really great to connect people to um, transit hubs. So let's say, um, you know, you lived in Winchester Cadillac and you really needed to get to the bus that's on Stevens Creek. Instead of having to wait, you know, walk, wait and make that transfer, we can maybe connect you to there or the light rail on South and uh, West Expressway, just as an example. But we are looking into where we can have these in West San Jose. We also are considering bus bulbs. So this is a combination of a bulb out and a bus stop. These are really great because they allow the bus to stop in lane. It doesn't have to spend time pulling out to the bus stop or pulling into the bus stop and back out into traffic. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but we lose a lot of transit efficiency making that movement. Um, traffic doesn't want to let the bus back in. So these help with that. And they also have all the safety benefits of the bulb out that I explained before. There's also um, a tool called Transit Q Jumps. I won't get too technical because this one is very technical, but it's like a baby uh, bus only lane. So the bus can, um, you know, when it gets to the intersection, have a lane where it can swoop, go around traffic and get in front of it. There's also Eugene, he's spoiled it a little bit, but transit priority signaling. This is technology that is on board the bus and it communicates with the lights, um, kind of similar to what fire trucks have and it can um, turn the lights green so it doesn't have to get stuck in um, the intersection. And we also just wanna have better bus stops. This is kind of the most basic and, and some people think boring, but it's one of the most important things we can do for people that ride the bus. Just give them a dignified, comfortable, safe place to wait um, where they can have shade, um, a place to sit, and you know, even better if it has um, you know, a countdown for when the bus is coming and, and other information about the area. Um, I'll stop there and take some questions. I see the chat lighting up and Amy, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Um, those are uh, a lot of neat ideas. I was, I was wondering if there's like a measurement um, that you've done, like, like at what frequency would buses need to stop for people to, um, you know, feel like they could re really use them for commuting. Um, one of my neighbors here, and again, I'm in that area near um, Prospect and Saratoga. Um, one of my neighbors works at Santana Row, and she tells me that, you know, she takes Lyft, she Ubers, that sort of thing. We've heard um, often from um, neighbors in Saratoga and neighbors here too, that they have tried to take the bus, but it just doesn't come frequently enough. So is there like a, you know, every 15 minutes? I mean, that seems, is that, that going to be a possibility? 
and yeah. some theories. There is a lot of studies done around this because there's there's like the actual time and then there's perceived time. And then there's, actually I should say there's scheduled, there is actual, <laughs> what happens when traffic gets involved and then there's how long people feel like they're waiting. And, um, you know, federal and state different regulations say 15 minute, what we call headways or, you know, a, a bus that comes every 15 minutes is considered high quality transit and more likely to get people to ride it. But that's if it in fact comes every 15 minutes. Um, anything more than that can deter people. Um, what we, in, in my experience, it's been 10 minutes or less um, to really get people to, to count on it. And I also saw someone with a question about how often the bus has to come to be bus rapid transit. That is 10 minutes or less. And bus rapid transit um, often has many lines running on that. So you will get um, many buses within that 10 minutes. So it's almost a bus every two minutes. Um, if you're thinking Market Street in San Francisco or something like that. Um, Amy, you're... Did that I have a, answer your question? Sorry. No, it, it did. And I, I mean, I guess I'm just trying to get an idea for how, um, you know, the, I'm expecting that we'll probably have, you know, more frequency come to Stevens Creek first and just trying to get an idea, like, realistically of, you know, down Saratoga Avenue, like, what kind of frequency we might, we might expect and when that would be. Um, but I also had another comment about um, the bus bulbs. That was interesting to see that. And I understand, um, you know, why that proposal proposal is there. Um, and I've actually, it's interesting because I've actually heard from neighbors, um, you know, proposing the opposite. Uh, and, and this is why uh, we don't have um, running along prospect. We have, we have a lot of, of car traffic uh, during commuter times, during, um, you know, school drop off pickup. We've got a high school um, right here. And um, it's just this, this competing thing. We're, we're um, it's like we're, with, with growth, we're expecting more and more cars to come through, but we also want to have, you know, more transit. And um, right now our buses, if they don't have a cutout, um, it ends up that it, it adds to the car traffic, right? And so I think a lot of residents think that that's a problem. They'd like to see more, tra more transit, but they think that the best way to do that would be to have, you know, some cutouts so the bus can get off the road and not hold everybody up and cause worse traffic. But I hear what you're saying about people not letting the buses in. So that's a problem too. Yeah, there, there's an image that I always wish I had on hand. You know how some people have a picture of like their wife in their wallet. <laughs> like I wish I had this picture that just shows like the amount of people on a bus and if all those people were in cars. So that's what we always like to think is there could be, you know, up to 80 people on that bus. And if we can't get them where they need to go, if they all start driving, that could be even more congestion. So we really want, you know, in this kind of mode shift idea to the beginning of our presentation, the more people that we can get on buses, the less traffic. And I know that that can be a, a slow curve, but it's something that we are really trying to prioritize because we just cannot widen the streets anymore, you know. Um, and it also really helps people with disabilities if we need to load a wheelchair onto the bus. Um, it is really hard to do so in the cutout sometimes because we won't have a wide enough sidewalk. So that is something that we're also considering. But I totally hear that, Amy. It's, it's always a, a trade-off situation. And how, and yeah, how can we make it as, as easy a, a switch as possible? I don't know. Thank you. Um, was there anything, anyone else that had any comments about these? There's also a ton of, you know, a lot more things you can do for transit. Um, we have a couple of questions on the chat, oh, Natasha. One of them is if you are with the city of San Jose. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't give a full introduction. I am an associate transportation planner with the city of San Jose. I lead our area-wide transportation planning work. Uh, this is one of them, but Augustine is the project manager on this. Um, so yeah, I do work here. Uh, and then the second one is is about um, the bus bulb um, that do you think could obstruct the bike lanes um, in some situations? Yeah, so this is also another trade-off point. Um, we are, you know, on transit priority corridors, we are prioritizing transit above um, bike and auto. 
um, trips. And again, this is trade offs depending on what street it is, but on a major routes with with transit, um, we are we would make that trade off, but there are also creative solutions such as transit islands. Um, so we can kind of float the bus stop in the street, let the bus um, bike lane go behind it. And there are also things like mountable bus bulbs where we make them wide enough so a bike lane can kind of go up behind the transit island and back down. Um, there's a lot of cool things when we start getting creative. This is kind of the step one, but um, they don't always have to compete. But if indeed they did on the transit corridors that we listed, we would prioritize the bus um, improvement over bike improvement. But that doesn't mean that we're not super excited about bicycles and making them safe because we that's our next toolbox. So, uh, not last and definitely not least, investing in a comprehensive and accessible bike network and, and infrastructure. So next, so these are in green, our proposed bike priority corridors. Many of these are in the bike plan um, that we can link in the chat, but, but some of these we also added through outreach. So I will try to read them all, there are a lot. There's um, Moore Park, Cypress, Williams, um, Monroe, Heading, Forest, Fruitdale, which you might have seen some improvements already happening um, right now, Shasta, um, Park Avenue, Race, and Lee. And I think I'm missing whatever this one is under Stevens Creek running parallel to it. Augustine, do you know the name of that street? Which one? The one right under Stevens Creek um, at the left of the screen. Uh, forest? Oh, down to the left. Just, uh, west. Um, oh, sorry, west. The westest one. This one? No, further west. Sorry, this, this is not a bunch more. <laughs> By San Tomas Expressway. One more. Um, here? Yes. What is that? Uh, yeah, this is more park. Um, and then, yeah, this is, um, uh, yeah, good question. Let me look into the map. Um, we'll put that in the chat. Yeah. This one must have been a late, not a late edition, but didn't get labeled. And I have too many streets in my head to remember what mm. this one is. But yeah, this is our proposed bike network. And the next slide is the toolbox of improvements that we're thinking for these corridors. So we have, um, you know, first and foremost, kind of the, one of the most impactful things we can do is creating protected bike lanes where possible. This is an image of a um, two-way cycle track protected by parking, but we have lots of ways of creating protected bike lanes, whether that's with parking, whether that's with um, kind of built um, cement mounds, planters, there, there's lots of things we can do. Um, there's also protected intersections. So protected bike lanes are great mid-block, but when you get to the intersection and you just kind of spit out the traffic again, it can be really stressful. It's also one of the most likely places you're you're going to be hit by a car if, if God forbid you are. So protected intersections create these kind of pockets where the bikes can go, um, you know, protected and the cars can turn around them. And then for, oh, it's a little covered. Um, sorry about that. Um, but it says bike boulevard. And these are corridors where we can't necessarily accommodate uh, a protected bike lane or, or bigger or, you know, bigger improvements such as that, but we can do traffic calming, such as speed bumps, chicanes, diverters, like exists in Nagley Park, to really slow streets down to a comfortable speed, ideally 15 to 20 miles an hour, so that bikes can feel comfortable taking the lane. Um, there's also trail improvements. We have a wonderful trail network here in San Jose, and especially in West San Jose. How can we improve these trails themselves and access to the trails so that people can enjoy them? and use them for their trips. We also know that, you know, if you don't have a safe place to put your bike at the end of your ride, you're probably not gonna bike there. So we wanna create more secure bike parking opportunities, especially near transit and other shopping corridors. Um, a lot of our shopping centers in San Jose lack um, any bike parking at all. So we're working with them to see where we can put these bike lockers or at least um, 
a bike rack in a visible um, populated place. There's also sidewalk level bike lanes. These are kind of a step up from regular protected bike lanes. These are sidewalk level, um, what we call cycle tracks, where you can be completely separated from traffic and separated from the sidewalk and you just kind of go um, parallel to traffic that way. There's also traffic diverters. These are um, in various parts around San Jose. They're used a lot in Portland, Washington, and other um, bike-friendly cities. They kind of either divert through traffic or, or some movement of traffic, but allow bikes and people walking through. And this just um, prohibits cut through traffic and really makes a, a really great um, biking experience. There's also bike connectivity across freeways. Someone earlier bought, um, you know, brought up, are we looking at ped bridges? Uh, yes, we are. We're really wanting to make sure because of the different freeways that bisect West San Jose that we're providing safe, enjoyable crossings for people walking and biking. And not just that they're safe, you know, infrastructure wise, but that they feel safe uh, for personal safety reasons. Because I know that you know, a lot of women I've talked to or just people in general kind of feel vulnerable when they're using these. Um, so this is the bike toolbox. I see some questions in the chat, but Amy, if you have your hand up again, uh, feel free to come off mute. Um, thank you. Um, I was just wondering if the city um, also kind of prioritizes bike um, you know, access um, around high schools, schools, schools in general, but high schools particularly. Um, like in our situation, our high school is is within easy biking distance, but um, you know, students would have to go through a, a major commercial area. So there's a lot of concern about you know safety and just making it safely through these major intersections um, as is. Um, so just wondering what the city kind of prioritizes that around high schools particularly. Yeah, Amy, thank you for constantly bringing up schools. That's some place that we look at with our MPIPs whenever possible, but we also have a Safe Routes to School group within DOT that focus on um, bike walking and car safety and transit um, ridership around our schools. They don't involve high schools as much. They stop at middle school, um, which I think uh, you know could definitely be expanded, but I can reach out um, to someone on that team and ask if you know they have any plans to do so and what that gap could be filled if maybe our MPIPs could be a full, you know, dive a little deeper into the high school if, it, if, if they're not um, meeting the needs of that population. That would be great, thank you. Cause like our, our neighborhood schools are really kind of located in the neighborhood, but the high schools are, I mean, it's, it's a much more perilous uh, trip. And I think a lot of times, you know, the younger kids too are more likely to have parents drop off, but you know, the older kids have more freedom and parents would like to see them exercise some more independence and but it is um you know it's, it's kind of perilous for an adult to get through some uh, commercial areas where there's a lot of traffic moving through so particularly concerning you think twice about having your kids cycle back and forth there yeah definitely and how much easier would it be for parents to buy their kid a nice bike than a nice car when they turn 16 um if we made it you know safe and enjoyable to do so uh, Justin, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, and I apologize if this was covered before. I, I joined a little late. I know you mentioned that the boundaries of this plan are based on urban villages, but is there a reason the Saratoga urban village isn't totally included? Um, Augustine, should you know the answer to that? Yeah, um, we um, when, when we started this plan, we we just uh, considered the, the urban villages that, that were adopted at the time. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And that's why um, it's, yeah, it's not right, there. Right, it's a designated growth area, but there's no plan mean, yet. Yeah, that's right. But that doesn't okay. mean that we're not going to do anything on Saratoga. We have a Saratoga as a, as a pedestrian priority corridor. Um, and even though um, we only cover a section of Saratoga, we are not all, all, only going to implement a project on that section, right? We're going right. to provide a, a, a design for the entire corridor. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank that makes you. sense. Thank you, Justin, for that one. There's two um, questions in the chat. Um, Cheryl, thank you for that data point about high schoolers crossing at Prospect and Lawrence. This is um, really useful data for us. This is, you know, we can't be everywhere all the time. So we'll definitely look into that intersection further. 
with this plan. And then um, Julie brought up the website says that we have a final draft plan ready winter 2021. Um, this is um, the kind of, we have the draft sort of ready, but we really wanted to make sure we were able to talk with the community about these proposed toolboxes before we went any further. And unfortunately, due to the um, you know, Omicron variant, we had to postpone a lot of the outreach events we had scheduled for winter. So this is kind of a, a delayed, you know, spring time draft, um, but we will be sharing with everyone that has come to any event um, with all of you here today. Uh, when that draft is up and ready to be reviewed, we will share it. Um, okay. Um, next slide, if there are no other questions. So the next couple slides we wanted to share with you kind of the list of streets that we're considering for prioritization as part of this plan. They're very similar to the streets we've, you know, lists we've already given today, and we won't go over them in detail, detail but these corridors right here on this um, slide are all the corridors we're considering for complete streets projects. So these are um, complete streets, meaning that we're looking at PED infrastructure, bike infrastructure where possible, transit infrastructure, as well as, you know, making sure we have a, a good balance of parking and curb access and things like that. Uh, it's a pretty exhaustive list. Some of these are um, already underway through different processes like BASCM, uh, but we are involved with DTA on that project. Um, anything else you want to add about this slide, Augustine? No, no. Um, yeah. And then the next one are the bike bull. Oh, wait, Amy, you had a question? Um, so, for example, Saratoga Avenue, if that were a complete street, do complete streets, do they sometimes look at, um, uh, I'm just thinking like a major intersection, I, you know, would they ever consider like, you know, a few blocks left or right if there's like a, if there's like a little cluster of intersections, you know, what I mean, they're not right on one street, but there's clear cluster of intersections in one area, could that be considered a complete street area? So these are obviously, do you want to answer that? Um, no, go, go ahead. I have some thoughts, but please go ahead. Yeah, so um, whenever we look at a street to do work on in general, we always look at what are the spillover effects or where we can make spot treatments around there. Um, there's a project that we're doing in East San Jose that are called our Quick Strike Bike Boulevards where we're looking at seven different intersecting corridors. Uh, so this is something we do look at. Um, and we know that a lot of people do complain that when we you know, do a complete street project or a, or a project on one, we can sometimes create maybe spillover traffic. We, we are looking at those things and looking how we can improve in batches. Also with our paving program, um, we, someone asked about funding uh, in the chat, how this will be funded a large part of our work, sorry, I didn't give a little side because that's what we're working on right now is where we can find all the money to do these things. These things are very, very expensive. We are looking at various grants. We're looking how to leverage our city budget, which is, which is not very big for these types of things. But also we have um, a great paving plan. And obviously you can put that uh, link in the chat that they said within the next, um, I believe five years, they'll be able to pave um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of city road, and we are following the paving plan. Um, whatever streets that they are working on, we are following them and asking them, hey, can you implement these safety um, improvements as you go? Because if they're already, you know, striping, um, picking up pavement, putting in curb ramps, uh, there's ways we can leverage that internally. And I, there's a lot of streets up in West San Jose on the paving plan. So that's when you'll see it done in batches too. Well, that was a really long answer. I hope I got you a good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I want to add that um, please go to, to the website, um, fill the survey that is a map base, um, because if we have um, all those locations um, in, in, in the plan, whenever we, we go and design one of these corridors, we can go back to that information and we can see if there is um, opportunity to improve, not just a corridor, but maybe um, um, some perpendicular streets or some areas next to that corridor. Um, but we need to know, <laughs> and we need to include that in the plan um, because when we go for funding, uh, one key thing that um, uh, we're gonna be asked is, do you have 
and have you done community outreach? Is the community asking for this improvement? And we have to prove that we have done it and, and we have to prove that the community is supporting those, those improvements. Um, so it's important for us, but it's also very important for, for all of you that um, you make those comments and you, you are sure that um, those are included in, in the plan. Great, thanks, Augustine. And I put that map based survey in the chat, but also all the comments made here will also, you know, be put into the document. Um, so bike boulevards, here is our list of initial bike boulevard corridors that we're going to be looking into, you know, how we can implement different traffic calming things like bulb outs, chicanes, um, speed bumps, things like that to, to get speeds down so that people can feel comfortable biking on them. Uh, next. And here are our list of quick build projects. So these are where we're going to try to leverage um, fast and, and, and more inexpensive improvements on, so that we can have some safety improvements going quickly. Um, a lot of our capital projects, when we, when we see you know, a complete street that's fully built out, uh, can take years and years and years, but we know that we need safety improvements now. So again, with our paving plan, with paint and plastic, we can have really impactful uh, changes in the ground within a year. And there's a lot of funding recently, both federal and state, to fund these types of projects. Um, so we need to have these opportunities ready. So the plans outline the corridors here listed. You know, we're looking at how we can make really key improvements quickly. Um, this is an example of some downtown. And one thing that these quick build projects also give us is data. If we put in uh, what we think will we'll fix an issue that we're seeing and we realize that there are problems with how we put that in, we can easily change it where we can't easily uh, change concrete. So these give us a lot of information about how well a project will work or how it won't work. So next slide. Does anyone have any questions about quick build or bike boulevards? Moving on to my favorite um, toolboxes of the night. Uh, another goal of our MTIP is to foster beautiful and active communities through placemaking. Uh, placemaking is a, a fancy word for just how can we create enjoyable places? <laughs> um, next slide. So here's our placemaking improvement toolbox. And this is some, uh, something that was kind of as a first for the city as far as being included in an MTIP. Um, we are gonna try to leverage um, our relationships with um, the park and recreation department, our um, economic development department and planning department, et cetera, to see how we can get these things in West San Jose. So first and foremost, we have pedestrian scale lighting. This is something brought up over and over and over again in our outreach. Um, people think it's very dark. They, and feel unsafe and that they don't want to walk. Um, so this is something we're looking into. Uh, green infrastructure. So San Jose does not have a lot of trees and, and greening and we know that um, it's good for the planet and good for just our emotional health to have more green around. So where can we put uh, green infrastructure in our streets and, and sidewalks? We also have um, wayfinding opportunities. Um, where can we put information signs with maps or other information to get people to know what's around them? Um, a lot of the time people maybe are taking transit here or visiting, or maybe you're just going on a walk in a different neighborhood. Like I have a lot in the pandemic and I don't know there's a coffee shop over here, or I don't know that it's actually only a five minute walk to a trail. So how can we have these in, in key locations? Then public art, how can, you know, how can we partner with local artists to, make more enjoyable public spaces. Um, so this is kind of on the sidewalk. And then we have street murals, which are something that we're seeing more and more uh, around the globe and, uh, and in the United States. Oakland has an amazing uh, program called Paint the Streets, um, Paint the Town. So yeah, these are murals actually in the roadway and there is data to prove that they slow down traffic. Um, public plazas, where can we have um, seating or create a public plaza in West San Jose? And where can we put parklets? We've seen parklets kind of explode during the pandemic. Um, so how can we make them either more longer lasting, more um, 
beautiful and or where can we put them where they're not already? And then also street activations, block parties, um, farmers markets. How can we get more of those into West San Jose? So maybe you can um, walk to one in your neighborhood, a farmers market or a um, you know a, a block party, and, and you know save a trip from going cross town to a park on a weekend or something like that. So we're looking into those. Um, any comments on these? Um, because we did have a Mentimeter exercise and we're not using that tool anymore. So we wanted to know if where you would want these types of things. What would you be interested in having in your neighborhood? Um, is there a place that you visited or that you saw something really cool that you would like to see in West San Jose? Um, oh, Amy, you raised your hand. Go ahead. I would just that um, I mean, up in San Francisco, other areas, they've got some really cool stuff. And also more, more closely in Los Altos, they do um, you know, there's a public arts group that's just done a lot of really fantastic things. I mean, to even, I've taken trips up there just to see like some of their newest, you know, installations. Um, but I think it's really important um, you know, to get people out to walk. Um, I mean, I live right next to this major commercial area and a lot of my neighbors, we don't walk um, to the shopping centers or, you know, walk places that we could. And I think, um, you know, having, a safe feeling safe as a pedestrian is major um and there are improvements that could be done there like the traffic islands for sure but i think also having something pleasant um because we still very much feel here in the paseo de saratoga urban village like it's still very very car centric and um you know with growth it's like these competing things we need to get more more cars are coming you know more people are coming they're going to have cars um, and just more people are going to be dry or we need to get more cars through um, with the Costco, we would a lot more cars. Um, but at the same time, we, we want to, you know, give people a reason to get out of their cars uh, and to walk. And I think, you know, so many of these things are just are, are really, really important. So 100% love the placemaking toolbox. Thanks, Amy, for sharing that. Um, and then Cheryl in the chat also said, I'd love to see this over acres of shopping parking lots. I agree that that is something that in West San Jose, we have to think a lot about and it's something the city has limited um, control over, but from the sidewalk and bus stop to the front door of the Trader Joe's can be a really, really long and unenjoyable walk and sometimes confusing, even just lacking a, um, sidewalks or any sort of direction. So yeah, we can definitely think a bit more about that. Um, but yeah, we're really excited. And, and I, one thing I wanted to mention too, all of these are kind of the, the beginnings. So anytime we're going to be exploring these improvements, if we're going to be thinking about green infrastructure, or come up with a wayfinding plan or thinking about murals somewhere, we're going to come back to the community, come back to the neighborhood where, they're, where we're thinking of, of doing them and, and plan them out more. So this is not the, the last time you're going to be hearing about any of these improvements. Augustine, did you want to add anything? No. Okay. No. Yeah, I, I agree with. I think that in all in all, everybody in the planning team is really excited about um, this type of improvements, um, because yeah, we are, we are also San Jose residents. We enjoy walking and 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 sometimes it's really sad to walk around some neighborhoods. Um, um, it's not pleasant. You don't you don't feel safe because of the environment. And uh, so these type of actions are really, really important. Um, I'm really glad that um, you all share that, that vision with us. Um, and I think this is our last toolbox. Um, don't hold me to that. Um, support infrastructure with programs and policies that encourage sustainable transportation choices. Um, so in our multimodal transportation plans, we know it's not all just about infrastructure. That's why we try to cover it with placemaking and some, some activations, but we know that this change that we're looking, this long-term goal of getting 88% of trips sustain, um, done sustainably is gonna take a lot more than just changing the built environment. So what can we do with policies and different programs to, to help that, to help get us to that goal? Next slide. So here's some things we're, we're thinking of for West San Jose. And two of these things, the first two I'm going to talk about are really more, you know, 
more likely than ever to happen. There's funding opportunities kind of knocking at our door, which is really rare <laughs> for, for these things. Uh, the first one is mobility hubs. And these are um, areas of a neighborhood or a city where we try to package as many mobility options as possible so that when you get off the bus or when you get to this area, you can take a bus, you can rent a car, you can charge your electric car, you can get on a scooter, you can buy a bus pass, you can um, get car share, you can rent a, you know, a cargo bike. Uh, the possibilities are kind of endless. Different cities have taken this to different levels. They can be really big outside of BART station perhaps, or they can be small and sort of a neighborhood. Oakland is doing amazing work with their um, e-bike lending libraries at libraries. Um, so this is just how can we get as many transportation options um, into communities as possible. And there are funding opportunities through the MTC, which is our regional transportation kind of governing body to do these in San Jose and in West San Jose. So this is really exciting for us. Um, we also have what we're calling our slow zones, or um, you know, with new uh, state legislation, cities can have a lot more control in setting speed limits, but also how can we look at, uh, Amy, this is to your point that you brought up, not just corridors, but areas where we can invest a lot in traffic calming, maybe around one complete street or around a high school or library and really make a, a slow zone, not just a slow street. Um, and there's some funding possibilities for those. Um, there's also things we're looking into like um, seasonal streets programs. So people love Viva Calle, people love Sunday streets in, in San Francisco and, and a lot of different street closure programs around the Bay Area. But how can we maybe have some of those in West San Jose to get people out and meeting their neighbors and just enjoying the space? Oh no, this one's um, covered a little bit, but urban forest programs. We have a city arborist, but we also have various nonprofits that we could team up with to do more plantings and get people trees if they want them. So how can we bring that into West San Jose? Reduced fares on transit. We have a, a lot of large scale planning programs around the city and we're um, you know, working with BTA to see how we can get reduced transit fares. Um, we know that transit can be really expensive for folks that rely on it. And it might be a, you know, a turn off if you're trying to take it. Oh, I don't wanna pay $5 for that. I still have some gas in my tank. Um, micro mobility expansion. A lot of people want to use bike share or scooter share, but it doesn't go everywhere in West San Jose. So how can we expand it to different parts? Uh, car share, that is a car that is available for renting. Um, and how can we get those into neighborhoods? And then, um, like we mentioned before, on-demand neighborhood bus service um, to get people from transit hubs to their neighborhoods for that first last mile connection. I love Cheryl bringing up golf carts. I grew up in Palm Springs. I feel like golf carts are my <laughs> culture. Uh, I, I think that there would be a great solution, but I don't know how other people <laughs> feel about golf carts that haven't used them or seen them very much. Sorry, Cheryl, that was like a personal anecdote. Not That was me as Natasha, not a DOT employee. Um, any questions about these things? Um, I also wanted to mention that there's a larger plan right now called the um, Move San Jose plan that is looking at citywide um, policies such as um, electric vehicle incentives, how we can have rampant um, kind of installation of car chargers around and, and other things like that to, to help curb our carbon footprint. And especially with city council's recent adoption of trying to go carbon neutral by, or going carbon neutral by 2030, these are um, very high priorities for DOT. Um, I guess we can go to the next slide. We are not using Mentimeter anymore and on the fly. Uh, so if any, no one has any questions, we can just go on to kind of our project next steps and how to stay involved. We are having a couple other neighborhood engagement op or next engagement opportunities. We want to come to your neighborhood association meetings. If you have one um, and you have time for us, we can give a short presentation 
update, share materials. Um, we're also going to try to host some online office hours um, where people can drop in and ask us questions and learn about the plan at various times during the day. We know not everyone can make these, um, these evening times. So we'll try to have one on the weekend and maybe one in the morning, one in the evening during the week. We also have what we're calling our technical advisory meetings. This is when we meet with neighboring cities and other departments within the city to make sure that we're aligning as much as possible. And we also have the online survey that Augustine and I have shared many times and we'll also share again uh, in a follow-up email with you all. Um, you know, due to COVID, we are a little limited in, in the outreach we can do, but if you guys can think of an in-person event that might be happening soon. We'd love to come out and join you. But kind of in that sweet spot period, uh, post-vaccine, we were able to go to some farmers markets and different community events, and that was really fun. Um, but they have to, um, you know, kind of dwindled a bit with the latest variant. But if you know of anything, please let us know. And also just stay involved with the project happenings. Well, now for signing up with this, you have been put on our stakeholder list, so you will be getting some emails with updates from us, but also always be checking the city website for updates and um, also the city Twitter and other social media websites. And then we have a website called Move San Jose where you can sign up for um, project specific updates if you're interested. And finally, here are both of our emails, <laughs> Augustine and mine, and we will send this again in that follow-up email. Um, Amy, I'd love for you to reach out and all the other folks that had questions about areas that weren't necessarily in our MTIP area. Uh, we are here for you, so please um, reach out and, and we can get the ball rolling on, on finding these solutions. And that concludes our presentation. Um, we'd love to answer questions anyone else has, but also I know people are probably pretty hungry. Uh, if you haven't eaten already, Amy, I see you have a question. Um, thank you so much for the presentation tonight. I love good planning and a lot of exciting stuff here. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely reach out. Um, if, if we wanted to, I was wondering about the complete street program. Again, I saw like Saratoga Avenue was one. Is it, is it, um, so it's included, it's just, what's the status of, is it included? It's just, it's not being actively worked on. What is the status of that? Amy, that is a really good question and something that, so for the next month um, and a half, depending on how much more outreach we can, we can jam in, um, we will be writing our implementation chapter or kind of our roadmap to how we can start um, getting these things funded. So we have some things funded right now just through different grants, but grants run on year long cycle cycles. So everything that you saw on the list today is on our list for writing into a grant. So this is kind of the vector to get funding. The Caltrans, MTC, BTA will have money and say, who has a plan? And now when we have this end tip, we can say, we have a plan. We heard from people, we have the data and it'll kick off a separate planning process usually. So for Saratoga, we would, um, and maybe this is getting too technical, but we would write a grant or people would say, we have some money for these types of projects. Does anyone have any corridors? We would say, we have Saratoga. Here's all the amazing and important reasons why Saratoga should get funded. We could use our data. We could use the outreach. All these things weigh the grant. You know, give us more points um, to get these grants. And then we would get a grant to do a, um, a complete streets plan or something like that. Or it could be quick build where we don't have to go through a full planning process. We can just analyze data and do some outreach. Um, so yeah, all these things kind of are just like getting teed up for funding. Oh. Thank you. Um, Eugene? Oh yeah, I just reading that question thing. They, so we'll hear back from you when your next public meeting is going to be because I know my group would certainly be interested in a lot of the planning that's going on for West San Jose with this multi with MTIP plan, particularly the sidewalk improvements, which are needed by the disabled community, because I see some areas like Stevens Creek Boulevard where you can just barely fit one wheelchair. 
as well as the transit signal priority and other transit improvements. Yeah, we can definitely loop back and Augustine and I are, are thinking about what a final meeting would look like when we have the final plan. If it can, you know, we will we will update everyone on, on this list about what that ne the next engagement will be. Right, and thank you for this presentation. I learned a lot and I hope everybody here learned a lot from this as well. And thank you all for coming and spending an hour and a half of your time. But, uh, this is something Augustine and I nerd out about and, and, and you know, made our careers about. It, it really means a lot when, when the public takes their time to, to hear and, and engage with us because our projects don't mean much if they don't actually get help, you know, from, from don't help people. And the best way to help people is hear them. So anywho, um, oh, Justin, yeah. did you have a question? No, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for putting on this presentation. This has been really informative. Um, and I saw, I don't know who asked it in the chat, but will this presentation be available? Um, yes, we will be sharing the slides and we'll be posting a video. It's being recorded right now onto the website. We're also going to put up a Spanish version of the presentation. So if you have anyone in your community that, or organization in your community that knows might need that. Um, and again, we can um, get that to you all via email, uh, follow-up email, but we'll also just be posting it on the website. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your evenings. I hope everyone has a restful rest of their week. Um, and have a nice evening, everybody. Oh, wait, Ronnie. We're on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, I was just about to add it to the chat. I just wanted to say thank you both. This was a fantastic presentation. Really exciting to see what potential mobility improvements will be coming to District 1. Um, and as far as neighborhood associations, it may be good to even take this to the D1 Leadership Group meeting um, in the near future. So. Yeah, that would be great. We did um, a presentation with them a while back and gave them an update months ago but it would definitely be good to maybe give them the full presentation yeah okay, thank you you're great thank you. thanks good night everybody thank you thank you I dropped some people into the waiting room. <laughs> Let me stop.